So if you love any of these anime or manga pictured here, there's a high chance that you will love the recommendations that I am about to give you as they all have one big thing in common, beautiful women. But in all seriousness, these series are all shonen, meaning they consist of similar themes and tropes because they all have the same target audience being males between the ages of 10 to 20. And if y'all like these series, then there's a high chance you will love these recommendations. So let's just get right into the first one. Does the fresh meat have any questions? Uh, yeah. How big are those titties? Now, if you recognize this clip, you're probably an avid anime watcher. And look, if you don't, don't worry, because this is Dead Man Wonderland. However, today, I'm not recommending the anime, and instead, I'm recommending the manga. And the main reason why is because the anime was one, an incomplete adaptation, and two, it left out a pretty key character. And this is a shame, because I honestly believe that just off the first chapter alone, it would have made waves of being an insane and completely crazy series, similar to Chainsaw Man. And like, come on now, just look at these panels. And just from looking at these panels, you can one, tell that this is a pretty crazy series, and two, the art style is pretty good. And to top it all off, this series power system is based on blood. And yes, you heard me right, they use blood to fight each other. And look, I know that I haven't really said anything about the story, but with all the twists and turns in the series, it is probably best to go in blind on what it is about. However, I will say one thing, the setting of Dead Man Wonderland is in a prison called Dead Man Wonderland, where the prisoners act as entertainers for the public as they perform in death games. So you can kind of imagine some of the crazy things that they have to do. And the last thing I will comment on is that the relationship between Gansa, the protagonist, and Shiro, the female lead, is honestly very well done. And unlike most shonen female characters, Shiro is a good character. So overall, if you want a cool, crazy action manga that is pretty short as well, then this is the perfect manga for you. And I would give it the first four chapters to decide if you like it. I'm a G. And since I fulfilled my promise, y'all should 100% like this video and subscribe for more anime and manga content. Now let's get into one of my favorite series of all time. Being D. Gray, man, and look, you've probably seen a bunch of videos gassing this series up to be one of the best shows of all time. And yeah, all of it is valid, and I would say it's better than most of these series that I had pictured in the beginning. And one of the main reasons why D. Gray Man is one of my favorite series is because of its protagonist, Alan Walker. In a world where Akuma, demons of the world created from human souls by the Millennium Earl, operate hidden among humans, there exists an exorcist who can see the souls in Akuma. Alan Walker, and it is a pretty tragic tale on how Alan can see the human souls in Akuma as it was actually the person who loved him the most who cursed him with this ability. And if we just continue going down the checklist of what makes an amazing protagonist, we would see that Alan Walker fits that description perfectly. And look, you're probably wondering about this right here, but don't search it up, alright? It's honestly one of the best plot twists of all time, and spoiling yourself on it would not be worth it. So just trust me and go and read it. And it's also just not Alan Walker, who is a great character, as D. Grayman has one of my favorite casts of all time, with a very strong deuteragonist in Yukanda, a shonen female lead who isn't completely garbage in Linnea Lee, and a plethora of amazing side characters. Also, if you add in the antagonist cast, it is truly amazing as the relationship between the Millennium Earl and Alan Walker is simply beautiful. It's simply beautiful. And the last thing I want to say about D. Gray Man is that the comedy is funny and it doesn't appear at random moments and messes up the tone. Unlike a lot of shonen series that have the comedy tag just slapped on there. And for this recommendation, I would give D. Grayman the first 16 chapters to see if you like it, as by then you will have seen both Yukonda and the Millennium Earl, and witnessed one of my favorite introduction arcs of all time. Okay, my next recommendation is Beastars. And before I get into Beastars, I just want to say, do not look at any of the fan art and just read the manga or watch the anime. And getting onto what this series is about, Beastars is a series that starts out as a mystery in its very first chapter. As one of these students in Sherrytown Academy, a very prestigious acting academy, was brutally eaten alive by another animal in the school. However, the story doesn't focus on this in the first arc and instead shifts focus to the main character, Legashi. 
a gray wolf who was friends with the animal who was eating. And because of this shift in focus, this becomes a slice of life drama series with a little action sprinkled here and there, as the main focus is mainly on how herbivores and carnivores can coexist with each other rather than focusing on who killed Tem, the animal who was brutally eaten alive. Making it similar to a series like AOT, The Promised Neverland, and Tokyo Ghoul, where there are two species struggling to coexist with each other. Except that in Beastars, peace has already been found. Well, so it seems at first, but slowly you will start to see the cruelties of an animal world. And with a series that deals with topics like this, it is essential to have an interesting protagonist who deals with the struggle of the world around them. Because most of the time with these types of series, they only go as far as their protagonist goes. And Beastars goes pretty far. And that's because Legashi is a protagonist who struggles with accepting himself. Being a grey wolf makes him a carnivore who needs to eat other living things for energy. And in a society where herbivores and carnivores have already established peace, it makes it difficult to do that. And throughout the story, we just see him go back and forth with this conflict as he desperately tries to suppress his nature. And this beautifully contrasts the deuteragonist of this series, Luis, a deer who is the biggest star of Sherry Town Academy and is the most most likely candidate to be a B-star. And with Luis, his development contrasts his legacy as while well, legacy tries to suppress who he is, Luis tries to combat what he is. As a deer, he is not as physically strong as carnivores yet he continuously pushes himself to surpass his limits throughout the story. And with Legashi and Luis both combating their natures, this puts both of them in strenuous situations. However, in these situations, we do get to see a lot of character development from both of them, and their overall dynamic and relationship throughout the series is a major reason to start the anime or manga. And after the first arc concludes, the story starts to refocus back on the mystery that was set up in the very first chapter of the series. And by doing this, it starts to elevate the tension of the series because there's always a real threat that someone might die. And because of this, there's a lot more action, a lot more drama, and less slice of life and romance, which a lot of y'all might like more. And the last thing I'll say about Beastars is that both the anime and manga are good experiences. And yes, the anime does leave out some moments here and there, but overall, it does a good job of adapting the story. So just go ahead and experience it and remember don't look anything up <laughs> so give this the first 10 chapters or the first two or three episodes to decide if you like it okay and this next recommendation is the most popular series in this video being assassination classroom where the objective is simple the students must assassinate their teacher and for a series like this i believe it is best not to know much about it because off the premise alone it brings a lot of intrigue into what type of series this is but look, I will tell you this though, it has action, romance, slice of life, comedy, drama and tension, twists and turns, and the most important thing, beautiful woman. But no, the most important thing that you should know about this series is that despite their teacher, Koro Sensei, being an alien who could blow up the entire world whenever he wanted to, he is honestly the best teacher a human could ask for. So for this recommendation, I would recommend just watching the entire anime because honestly, I don't think anyone can not not like this show. So give it a watch. Okay, so for this last recommendation, I have iShield 21, which is a football series. And if you live anywhere else in the world, you probably think this is a story that revolves around this ball. But you're wrong, it revolves around this one. And for the start of the series, the main character, Sena Kobayakawa, was never familiar with that ball, and he probably didn't know anything about sports, because for him, life simply sucked. He had no time for sports as he was running from bullies 24-7, and when running from bullies one day, he is spotted by Yoichi Himura, the quarterback of the Diamond Devil Bats, who only have two players on their roster. And in case y'all don't know that much about American football, you need a whole lot more players than just two. In fact, you need at least 11 people on the field. And while watching this wimpy kid run away from a bunch of bullies, Himura has the bright idea that this wimpy kid is the perfect player to play the running back position. And that's because Sena's best ability is that he is I'm fast as fuck, boy. And having that ability allows him to get past anyone, giving him an edge on the football field. However, that is not enough to win games because one, you need more than three people on the field, and two, being fast doesn't matter when you're up against opponents who know how to play the game and are pretty fast as well. So for Diamond to ever dream of reaching the Christmas Bowl, the most illustrious bowl game in Japan, they have to become a lot better and add a lot more players. 
And with that premise, it probably sounds like a lot of other sports series. But don't worry, just like every other great sports series, iShield 21 has something that makes it stand out and different from the rest. It's amazing world building. And when reading this series, you will truly feel that the world is moving outside of the main cast, especially with the Saibu Wild Gunmen and the Oja White Knights, Diamond's biggest rivals, as we frequently get to see and hear about what they are up to. And because of this, it gives iShield 21 a very large cast filled with unique characters, as it's just not those two teams who get the spotlight put on them, as it's also every other opponent that Diamond faces. And all this setup eventually gets paid off, as iShield 21 honestly has as my favorite tournament arc of all time, which I will have to dive into at a later time because this tournament arc makes up nearly half the series, so dedicating just a couple seconds to it is going to be a massive disservice. So what I will say right now is that what makes it so great is the constant character moment after character moment as it truly makes these characters feel alive and relatable. And add in that the art also takes a step up in this arc, meaning all the action scenes are elevated as well. And man, you're just going to be in for an amazing ride. And honestly, I expected nothing less from Richaro Inigaki, the author of Dr. Stone, one of the most interesting stories to come out recently, and the artist of One Punch Man, Yusuke Murata, as they truly cooked up something special in iShield 21. So for iShield 21, I would give it the first 10 chapters, decide if you want to continue reading it. And that will be all the recommendations I have for y'all today. I'm going to head out, go and finish iShield 21. So yeah, peace.